fast as he applies the regular A-triple-F, the alcohol's eating it up. Go ahead and plunge it in the fire, Dan. No help. Go back to the backsplash. Okay, shut down. What I don't want to do is dilute this with water so much that it makes it easy for the alcohol resistance. What's happening is the foam now is running down the backsplash. The polymeric membrane is starting to form. And it's starting to overtake the fire. Without the polymer in the universal gold, it would never happen. Shut down. Now let's get up a little bit closer and look at the burn back characteristics. Mind you, do not trip. There's a crack here. Beware of the wind a little bit. You see the polymer on the leading edge? The foam blanket's riding on that polymer. That's all it gets pushed by itself as you're splat back splat. Exactly. Now there's not enough foam weight here to push it the rest of the way across. What we're looking at now is how much of a burn back resistance this product has in the face of this fairly low heat flux. If this was gasoline, we wouldn't get this close. I guess the message today is that the sky's not falling with effort. You can do it right from there. You don't need to back them up. This is type 3 application, direct plunging into the fuel. What did he do to his foam? So if the ladder truck shows up and starts pumping their discharge into the fuel storage tank, they think they're going to put it out forget about it. Then go back to the backsplash now. Are you getting it yet? On a still fire, same rules apply when it comes to power solving. Okay, pull the bale all the way up, and Dan's going to double the application rate now. He's going to 12 gallons a minute. I know what my minimum is. There's no such thing as maximum. In combat, there's nothing wrong with you going in with a whole lot more than you calculated. The worst that can happen is it'll go out faster. Shut down.